everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are excited because we are finishing up our little project that we've been doing since we started uh, these uh, ranking episodes. We we did one of the very first ones we did was the classic rom-com episode. And we've done every decade since. Uh, and uh, t- today we are doing the 2020s. So it's not even a full decade. Uh, the most recent uh, decade, we've had a bit of a resurgence, a renaissance of rom-coms. Okay. So that's exciting. And uh, it's a, a fun list. And, uh, and yeah, I, it's it's nice that we're in an era because, you know, especially at that like seven year period mm-hmm. uh, of the 2010s, because uh, <clears throat> there's hardly anything that was uh, in theaters during that time. Yeah. Um, Crazy Rich Asians was one of the only big budget rom-coms for about seven years which is crazy yeah so i'm happy that we're seeing a little bit of a resurgence going on but uh but yeah i i'm phil grace wagner and terry's here hi yes so what was it like for you to make this ranking oh, it was challenging it was challenging because i have not been ca- keeping up with my rom-coms of the yeah. 2020s yeah so and there was there's been some that i have watched that i was like this is not going to go on my list uh-huh. So I went in search, you know, it, a lot of what I watch is from Netflix because Netflix mm-hmm. has rom-coms from every country. Yeah. And so I went really international and just like, I've always loved watching international films regardless, but I really went in searching for something new yeah. and fresh and or maybe I, a of something. I also have some international on my list yeah. and I have a whole bunch of LGBTQ forward uh films on my ranking which is just kind of fun that's Uh, the thing about people have negative things about streaming but streaming has brought us more variety in that element we are closer to watching things made in other countries mm -hmm. and it's good to watch stuff like that because it gets you out of your bubble yeah you get to learn about a culture you're maybe not familiar with through their art Mm -hmm. and so and like celebrate all different kinds of love totally not just a absolutely yeah yeah uh, so we have uh, are starting a, a fun thing that we're doing for our patrons where there's a bonus episode where you get to hear our 13 and 14 of this ranking. Of course, we'll publish the in the description our short list of the different ones we are considering. Uh, and uh, so you can uh, you can make your own rankings. You can if you do make them, please tag us. We'd love to hear your favorites. And, uh, and, but we have that 13 and 14 for the patrons. And that's something we're going to try to do when possible uh, for these ranking episodes, because we want to try to give as much uh, bang for your buck with the patron as possible. Please check it out. It's the best way you can support us and uh, just try to make it as valuable as possible. We have Nina Weinman coming on for a watch along this month. Uh, We're going to watch Double Holiday. It's going to be really fun. So it's definitely worth your investment uh, to become a patron, uh, and you can check that out. But let's dive in. We have a top 12, and what is your number 12? My number 12 is uh, Squared Love. This is a Polish movie that I discovered... uh, on Netflix, it's uh-huh. not that old. It's 2021. None of these are that old. Um, but I discovered this is the first in a trilogy. Uh, I didn't have time to watch the other two. Uh, there's a lot of secret trilogy movies uh, in Netflix. <laughs> but I think... <laughs> I don't know how good this movie is, Rachel. But it reminds me of Gem and the Holograms. The plot is wild. Oh. The father... <laughs> she's a school teacher, right? And her father owes money to loan sharks so she puts on clearly a wig this amazingly bad wig and becomes a model and Mm -hmm. this is sort of like and she meets the guy that she's doing the campaign with uh who's an actor and a model and of course they don't get along well at all but then his he goes helps his brother take care of his niece and uh you know he's very selfish and he's a you know, uh, a womanizer and all that stuff as well. So so his niece, she's the teacher of his niece. Um, but he does not recognize that this is the same person, Rachel, just with a curly wig on. And she takes her glasses. She has glasses on when she's a teacher. She's got a curly wig on when she's a model. He cannot tell these ladies apart. And and if you know are familiar with Gem and the Hologram, Neither could the dude who was dating both these ladies. And essentially, that's what he's doing in this movie. 
And it's bonkers. It's ridiculous. <laughs> A child goes, you know, that's my teacher, right? And he goes, what? <laughs> you know, like, no, I don't believe it. And it's just, you know, it's a little predictable. But I think the bonkers um, sort of storyline is very charming. And, and they're, you know, these are beautiful people. And um, I don't know, when I was watching the movie, everything sounded just so sexy, you know, <laughs> they're speaking Polish, obviously, but it's just like, I don't know. It's it's very sleek, also a little steamy and uh, really funny. So. Yeah, I've never seen this one, so that's fun to yeah. hear about something that. Yeah, uh, unbelievable that it's a trilogy, though. So I was like, yeah. now I have to invest <laughs> in two more movies. But I just think the story, the premise, is just so bonkers that he can't tell this lady and this teacher. Th Rachel, there's this moment when they go on a date and they do all these wild things together, and I'm like, did that wig stay on the whole entire time? And it's really. You start to question, like, how? How did this man not know that's a wig? <laughs> how does he not know? She's the same size, and right. she's got the same face. It's that's like Clark funny. Kent. You know, he puts the glasses on. You can't <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, my number 12 is definitely not Hallmark, Hallmark friendly, Hallmark mm -hmm. approved. Uh, it's very R-rated, but um, it's bros is my number 12. Oh, I have mine a little, both oh, a little do? higher for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very, uh, very funny. Uh, and Luke McFarlane is so great. Oh, and so great. It, it's, he is really great in this movie. Yeah. yeah. And it, it really does make fun of Hallmark quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and I think tongue in cheek. And I think Hallmark embraced that because they yeah, were like, we're going to support our star, you know, yeah. a good relationship that they have with Luke McFarlane. It's all so. in good fun. It's and, all in uh, good fun. You know, it's it's definitely, like I said, very R rated, mm -hmm. but I, I really yes. did enjoy it. So, uh, and you can check it. We did a whole recap uh, of yeah. Bros if people want to. That was a good out. episode. Yeah. It was fun. I enjoyed that episode. Um, so, uh, let's see. What do you have at 11? Uh, this is where I have Palm Springs. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I enjoyed it because it's like a funny time loop movie. Mm -hmm. And I like how they don't really explain how this time loop occurs or or even really how they solve whatever problem they have in this movie or if they solve it. They just and they, they don't take they don't spend a lot of time, you know, telling the audience like the reasons for it. It's like, don't do this. This happens. And then they do it. And that happens. And it's pretty funny. And J.K. Sim Simmons running around trying to kill these guys. It just he pops like there are chunks of the movie where you forget J.K. Simmons is in the movie, and then he just pops up like shoot an arrow into this guy's back or whatever, and it's it's funny, and I think that they 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 use the the uh, time loop of it all very clever and in a fresh way. It's a little raunchy, but you know if you can handle it, yeah. then you'll have fun with this one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, Bros is raunchier, so yes, yeah, <laughs> that's true. I I mean, I guess for me like it feels a little bit more discordant in palm springs the the r-rated uh comedy whereas like bros just goes for it completely yeah it goes completely and it's part you know of that saying? world yeah but i i still really enjoyed palm springs uh yeah. love great chemistry and uh and just they managed to keep it fresh even totally. though it's the, you know the time loop can get kind of boring sometimes uh, but uh, my number 11 is one I think is underrated. Uh, I, I think it just kind of came and went. And nobody talked about it. But uh, I really enjoyed the hating game. Uh, we interviewed actually the the director, Peter Hutchings, uh, um, on the on the podcast for his movie, which brings me to you, which I also enjoyed. But the hating game, I really like the book uh, that it's based on. Uh, these two that are rivals in this uh in in this um it's by sally thorne at this company and they they have the it's written very clever in the book about, about this hating game back and forth back and forth and of course it's like enemies to lovers it's a very sexy movie i think they have really good chemistry and uh yeah i just i like it i think it's fun i have so, not seen this one yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's just one of those movies that kind of came and went I, and nobody really, you know, I don't know. So, but I I noticed and I enjoyed it. So, if you all want to check out our interview with Peter, uh it was really fun. And that, well, that was one fun thing last year is that because of the strike, I interviewed a lot of directors in the last 6 months uh because they were like the only people you could interview, you know. Yeah. 
So I interviewed Jonah Feingold, I interviewed uh, uh, Peter Hutchings, interviewed Adam Andrews. Uh, who did and at least Bethlehem. they could promote their movies, it's right? It's fun, yeah. Like, yeah. I, so I love talking to directors. But um, anyway, so The Hating Game, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, what do you have at 10? This is where I have bros. Mm, mm-hmm. And yeah. I liked a lot of the movie. I did think that, man... That Billy Eichner, he was hard to take at times. I don't yeah, believe. Yeah, I, I can see that. I, I like I like the movie, but like it's sort of you watch the movies and 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 it, it ends, but and you're like that's not forever, and yeah. I feel like they're I not agree. forever. Yeah, you I know, agree. but it's okay in the moment that you're watching it in the movie, but when it's over, you're like, yeah, they're gonna break up in six months. <laughs> like yeah. I don't think they can sustain it. Yeah, but I do. I agree. I I do agree. The, that's why it's twelve. Yeah, the the Deborah messing of it all is that's really funny. funny. That's a good scene. It's probably the funniest thing in the movie. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting it. Or if I did, I completely forgot she's yeah. in the movie. And it was, I just laughed so hard. It was so funny. Well, and I also, I don't think that they necessarily have very good chemistry. Like, I love no. Farland in the movie. But it, that's like that adds to the feeling of like, yeah, I this would, is I, not going to last. Because they don't really have yeah, that good chemistry. I will say that, thankfully that Luke McFarlane was in this movie because he carried it on his shoulders. I think he he gives the best performance. I mean, not to slant anybody else in the movie, but I just really think he, he is the heart of that. He, I think he's more relatable too. Yeah. And that's probably the intention of it too. Like uh, to make at least one character relatable to the general audience of it all. But like, he really carries that in the movie. And it's like, I, I just don't see them lasting, but it's, it's sweet. It's a sweet movie, you know? We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Okay, so I have a number 10. I have a little movie from last year. This is from over in England. I have Rye Lane. Oh, yeah, I have this higher on my list. Okay. Yeah, yeah really cute little movie uh, about uh, this uh, couple. They meet uh, in, uh, they've both been through hard breakups and they actually meet and he's crying in the in bathroom. The bathroom. And she finds him and she's Are you like, okay? Are you okay? Um, and, and the script is really cute. I love the whole thing of like, if you don't wave at ships, you're a bad person. <laughs> oh yeah, it's so great. And it just takes place all in a day. And it's just yeah. adventures that they're having in a day. Yeah. And, and she gets him into a lot of shenanigans. Yeah. And some of the humor doesn't land 100% for me, but I really, really like both of the leads a lot. I thought they had really nice chemistry and uh, it's just a-, yeah. a a sweet sweet it's movie. very sweet but yeah. it's it's just you don't want to laugh at this guy crying in the bathroom but you yeah. do it's so sweet <laughs> like what's i like then they have colin firth popping up out of nowhere oh like, yeah i me? forgot that yeah colin yeah and firth. it's just sweet and it's it really shows you to a part of london you don't get to see a lot in films mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know so yeah that was nice and they too. have like the take. strong british accent like yes. it's 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 not tempered at all oh it's when he strong. goes yeah when he goes to that barbecue and they start mm-hmm. the, the love songs on his phone <laughs> what i love playing. when yeah that's so good and i love <laughs> when they're breaking in to get the record oh my god that's so funny that and they're singing scene. karaoke i mean yeah. it's like it's like one adventure after another but they <laughs> were so charming together like this is on hulu i recommend everybody to go see it it's actually yeah. pretty charming it's really yeah, charming. it really is it really and is. i don't think many people know about it because mm-hmm. you know they don't advertise their movies that they put on hulu and it is a yeah. british movie and disney they had- doesn't really care about what they put on hulu they don't they don't they yeah. have they have the you know the rights for it and then they just like let it you know disappear essentially mm-hmm. yeah 
uh, uh bros you can see on peacock by the way yes yeah and uh and see uh, palm springs is on hulu yeah yeah it's on hulu if you want to watch the hating game that is on hoopla and canopy and on hulu so yeah these are a lot of streaming <laughs> movies yeah on. actually a lot of these movies i found like they were pretty available to watch yeah but yeah pro- yeah of course they're, they're more recent but mm-hmm. uh save for one on my list um but anyway so what do you have at nine i have anyone but you mm-hmm. um okay this okay this is not a good movie <laughs> but yet i found it entertaining if yeah. that makes any sense well, I don't think Len it's a Powell, particularly good movie. I mean, oh, oh my, my gosh. He's so good. I don't understand Cindy Sweeney. And yeah, I don't I mean, want her she's... publicist to, to come at me because I'm going to say this right now. <laughs> I think I don't know. I, I, is it because I, I, she's a conventional, a conventionally attractive woman? Like, she's just a pretty blonde in a group of other pretty blondes. And I don't mm-hmm. mean that as an insult because she is a pretty woman, you know? But yeah, like, she's very nothing... beautiful. There's and, nothing unique about her, I was going to say. And I don't think she's the strongest actress, but no. she's still young. She could improve, you know. Particularly, but I don't in, understand her. Particularly in that movie, I thought she was really wooden and really flat. Oh, and yeah. that affected the chemistry. Totally. The best part about that movie was anything about? that was an homage to Much Ado About Nothing. Like, yes. that, I wish they could have had even more of that. And, totally. and Glenn Powell, he really does go for it. Like it He just, does. Like, I the mean. The scene with the spider is <laughs> fearless. Yeah, so it's it's uh, so I funny. That. So funny because I, I waited till this was on Netflix to watch it because I I didn't see it in the theaters and I'm mm-hmm. laughing. It was the middle of the night and my sister's like, "Oh, you had a good time watching that movie." I was like, "It's not good," and she's like, "But you were laughing." I said, "Yeah, but it was entertaining. <laughs> if that makes yeah. any sense, yeah. I think you should see it." There are some hysterical moments, like you see Glenn Powell exercising on the beach, and it's like, "Hmm, those are interesting exercises, right?" And then he right. can't swim long distances, and she's like, "You're hot, girl." you know and he's like yeah. no you know and he really goes for it and but when you agree those parts that are much better at nothing when they're like yes. staging the the conversation yes, that and, is you know that those were my favorite parts those, of the yeah, movie. yeah those were and they had an interesting supporting cast yeah and they did. Like I, 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 mean, I, I was wondered, so thrilled that it did so well that it had those totally legs, because now we get to happy. see more stuff like that right yeah. now well, it, I struggled putting it on my list, but I thought it deserved it at least because, yeah. you know, there's entertaining moments to it. Mm-hmm. Plus, Hawaii is beautiful. I mean, not Hawaii. Australia. Australia. Yeah. Why did I say Hawaii? <laughs> Australia is beautiful. You well, know, and they use, you know, good yeah. locations. Yeah, for sure. My number nine is underrated from last year, except for on Hallmarkies podcast because me and Michelle loved it. Um, it's Xmas. Uh, and uh, I I just, I thought the the whole premise for this was so funny uh, I have the, yet to the, see I, this one. So the idea is is that he, the, he so he broke up with he had dated this girl for a long time. They all they got engaged and then broke up. Uh, she basically she ended it and he's still devastated. Whatever. Yep. Anyway, and so he tells his parents. He says, "I am not coming home for Christmas. I can't. Sorry. Whatever." And so then they happen to run into her and they're like, "Well, you should come. He's not coming." And he, the same cool come. Rachel. You, 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 you and uh, and but then he surprises them, Ugh. and he, uh, <laughs> he, he does come because he told them for sure I'm not coming 100. And uh, and I thought that was a very funny premise. It uh, is a funny premise. I could picture my parents doing that to like somebody it's, that one of us had dated for a while, and if they were so sure uncool. that we weren't coming, being like, "Sure, come on over," you know, and. Uh, and and I I just really I liked the physical comedy the screwball comedy of it and I think Jonah Feingold the director who we interviewed I think he really gets that dynamic and uh, I liked all three of his movies that he's done so far all rom coms he did a movie called At Midnight which I enjoyed and then uh, Dating in New York an indie uh, and uh, and so I'm just real excited for him and his career and what he's doing and I liked. Leighton Meester and Robbie Amell. I thought they had nice chemistry. The whole supporting cast playing his family was really fun. Uh, there's a scene where they all got high, which was hilarious. <laughs> uh, I, I know this got pretty bad reviews, but Did it? I really It's on my it. watch list. It's, I really like, I didn't get it. a chance. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to see it. It's on my watch list. I have yeah. to see it. 
I'm yeah, looking forward I think to a it lot because of I do think it's funny. Will enjoy it. Well, like yeah, Donna it, Benedicto's in it. Yeah, a girl. So that's fun. And uh, so yeah, uh, what do you have at eight? Oh, a movie I can't believe I liked as much as I did. Um, it's Lisa Frankenstein. I know you didn't mm-hmm. you not sold on this movie too much, but I did go I fresh on it. But yeah, I can't pinpoint exactly what I like about it so much. <laughs> You know, because I'm hot and cold when it comes to uh, Diablo Cody. Mm, I almost mm-hmm. said Cody Diablo, Rachel. I almost <laughs> said it backwards. Um, I mean, it's barely a comedy. I would say it's. Oh, I I laughed hysterically. I thought it was really? all a comedy. I thought it was oh. all. It's like a murderous comedy. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I just I think it's like yeah, it's, it's ambiguous on what of the '80s year it's set in, but it's just the uh-huh. '80s. It uses all yeah. that stuff. You know, the exercise suits, like my family was killed by a mass murderer. And that's why, like my mom was killed by a mass murderer. And it's making fun of also all the like serial, you know, those type of movie, those type of horror movies in the 80s. But the way she resurrects this guy, it's so disgusting, too, because he's a bad guy and his bugs coming all out. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Like there's something about this movie. I can't believe I was so charmed by it. I, I was intrigued when I saw the, the trailer and I was like, I'll see it when it comes, you know, when it goes streaming, because this is streaming on Peacock. But I saw it as a secret movie and mm. I just loved it. And it was just, just something about it. Maybe it's because it's the 80s vibe and I remember the 80s very well. And uh, I just something about yeah. making fun of all the cliches of the 80s, but not a, not in a, in a clever-ish way, sort of, you know, tongue in cheek in a loving way. But yeah, I, and- you know, there's another movie coming out this year called Your Monster. Uh, that's uh, has a. I, I'm very curious to hear what you think of it. I saw it at Sundance. Uh, about it's kind of a it's kind of similar, but a riff on Beauty and the Beast. Um, oh, okay. Modern, I might cause... enjoy this one. <laughs> yeah, I think you really like it. I liked that one better than this, but I. I, oh, I, I did appreciate the sort of dry sarcasm in the movie, right. and when I just Rachel- wish that she had been. Uh, I think that she spent so much of the movie in love with the other guy oh totally like i knew like i was like it's this is gonna like smack her in the face i kind of figured Mm -hmm. that out but like when he's playing the piano and she's singing to ario speedwagon i was rolling i was like i almost fell out of my chair there was just something so and i actually not i don't think Catherine newton is that good of an actress but i actually liked her in this one mm-hmm. and and good. i thought he was she's very good, good. cole spouse was very good i just wish they had had her like not be into anything. him from the beginning you know like as opposed to this other guy it did the trailer did kind of make you believe that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but yeah oh I, like what how does the tanning bed heal anything <laughs> you know and he's like she's so yeah. in body parts on him and it's like ridiculous it makes no sense yeah. it's, it's you know and yeah. then that but ending made me laugh but yeah. it's like i don't know i think it's unique mm-hmm. enough well my uh my number eight is uh a movie that has some darker stuff uh but uh i still think it, it counts overall um it's the worst person in the world this is a norwegian film uh and uh it's uh it's a comedy drama uh, you know um but it's it's about this girl who is is uh um it's a coming of age story about this girl who is uh you know her first time out of out of the house out of college she I means she's going to college and she meets this guy uh, well, there's these two guys. There's Axel and uh, Elv- Elvind, and uh, and you know she's just kind of experimenting, and trying things, and and uh, it's sweet and funny, and there are some sad parts. Um, and I thought that uh, her and this Elvind had such amazing chemistry. This is definitely and this is not Hallmark friendly. This is definitely an R-rated <laughs> film, uh, but. Um, uh, but it's got a good script uh, between the, the the banter between the characters and uh, and her growth as a uh, you know young woman. Um, you know, a lot of times these coming of age stories don't work for me, and I don't like them. But this one I did like, and uh, and um, they had huge chemistry. It's a very hot movie. <laughs> I haven't seen this one. It's streaming yeah. on. Uh um let's see here 
It is on Hulu and Canopy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we'll check I think out. I've seen the poster, but I haven't I haven't watched it. Yeah. yeah. I'm intrigued now. Yeah. I, I I think it's I I think it's good. And it got nominated for Best Screenplay and um Best Foreign Film uh in that year. So it got a yeah. lot of a lot of praise. A lot of praise. Uh but uh but what do you have at seven? This is uh, I have red, white, and royal blue. Oh, you finally saw it! I finally saw this one, <laughs> and Uma Thurman's accent was much more uh, okay once you watch the movie. In the trailer, I was like, "Why is she foghorn <laughs> leghorn?" Um, I don't know why everybody I love does it foghorn so leghorn. much. Um, yeah, I have it at seven. I enjoyed it too, but I have it at seven because I just thought it was too predictable and i have not read the novel mm, i know it's very mm-hmm. popular so yeah. i don't know if it's a faithful adaptation it is but... pretty faithful there's some okay. people who got all upset because he has a sister in mm-hmm. the novel and but i felt like everything that it was substantive substantively accurate like that's the only thing i care right. about in in adaptations is like do they get the substantive heart of the story right. and i feel like they did in this and like for instance, the 2022 uh, persuasion is not substantively accurate to the the novel at all. Like the character is completely different story, uh, and that can be okay. I'm not a traditionalist. If you then if you take the bones and then re- in your subversive and you replace it with yeah. something interesting, right? It with carries the cool. spirit of that, it. Yeah, yeah, that I'm fine with that, but that was not the case with that uh that no. persuasion but um but in this in this because i think it was a pretty good adaptation of the novel i think they have like amazing chemistry i, I just i, I just really wish it wasn't them. so predictable because there was a moment i was like mm. i said there was a moment in the movie i was like oh i know what's gonna happen they're gonna yeah. have msnbc you know, well, yeah, up. the political part especially is completely. You know, ridiculous. and I was like, they're gonna you have know, them as the beacons of like. <laughs> not that I'm complaining, but it's yeah. just like boom, they came out. I was like, oh, it's so paint by numbers in that yeah. aspect. It yeah. was much more like they focused so much more on the political than I thought they would. Mm. Uh, like I was so much more interested in like the romance of it and how yeah. they were going. You know, but it's kind of it hard is a bit of a wet look. dream when it comes to <laughs> everything that they. Yeah, and I was like, oh, I knew it. You know, I always groan when I see, like, newscasters cameo in movies. Um, oh, yeah. I yeah, always, because I was like, yeah. oh, it always screams, like, just false. Like, <laughs> just cast a fake person from a fake network. Yeah. But um, but it's, it's a little hard to, like, oh, poor little rich boy, the son of a president, poor little rich prince, you know, <laughs> woe is me, my life is so hard. But yeah. I think that really, But I think like, they pull it the, off the, yeah. yeah. The royal family, though, I feel like how many other situations where you could convincingly believe that somebody would have to stay closeted? That was right. That was much more of a of an easier like pill yeah. to swallow, so to speak, of the of the trouble that he was having, tr- trying to be his true self, not knowing if yeah. he would be accepted. Uh, and like Stephen Fry, you know, <laughs> popping up there, and I was like, yeah. what? Which you is know? really random, you know. Which is funny because, of course, he's gay. Uh, right. So for him to be the the stick in the mud is kind of a yeah an interesting choice. And, but... I mean, I mean, I know it's an <sighs> alternate alternate reality, but like you know, they were trying to like yeah. meddle him on like Harry and whatever. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know if that was a good uh, match like to try to play off, but I liked it. It's it's fun. Um, yeah. It's just a little too predictable for me, but it is it is fun. And oh, I I think yeah. it works better than Bros. If I hate to compare yeah. like compare the gay movies you know yeah. to be blunt well they have um, so like i i'm i just think they have I'm, like yeah or i should Their say i should say that i should that say that scene well, where they're dancing oh my god i should i should phrase so that better much. and say that yeah to compare the lgbtq yeah. movies um that's a well, better i mean it's natural a little bit yeah. you know when you're um, talking about chemistry but right. my number seven is actually was a big surprise to me something i thought was quite underappreciated but i really enjoyed the 2022 take on Father of the Bride. I did not think I would like it. They kind of just dumped it. You know, there was no, um, but this is a story that I think just works. This dynamic of the father having a hard time, like letting go of his daughter. And it just provides such a great, like canvas for humor. I've liked every single Father's Bride movie that has been made. I like the Elizabeth Taylor ones. I like the Steve Martin ones. I liked this. And I thought like the, the take that they kind of had on it of him 
being this immigrant and bootstrapping it up and being kind of proud of that and uh and uh him that the like that was more what he was being kind of protective of i thought that was like a a good angle to take and and also the fact that they were getting that there's that him and the wife are getting a divorce like you have to do something to try to make something different and then when she hears that She's kind of, you know, thrown by that, you know, upset by it. This is not as silly as the, as the Steve Martin one, but of course it's not like that wouldn't, like, you're never going to, like, they have a wedding planner who's, you know, antics and stuff, but nothing, it's much more grounded in tone than the Steve Martin ones, but like, you're not going to be able to compete with that. So you have to try to do something different, I think. And I really liked it. I thought it was really good. And uh, and so it, it uh, you know, it worked for me. So I and Andy seven. Garcia can still oh get gosh. it. He really my can. Gosh, with that white. Like, <laughs> oh my man! Yeah, he Ooh. had a good little stretch there when he was Mom Mia Two Book Club. Although he's so hot yeah. at the book club movie still. <laughs> yeah, guys, really like can. he can still get it. Andy yeah. Garcia can still get it. <laughs> yeah, he really can. <laughs> Introducing the exciting new debut novel from Savannah Carlisle, The Library of Second Chances. Daily walks along the sparkling shoreline and chats with her best friend are a part of the slow-paced life for bookstore owner Lucy Sullivan. But when she hears Logan Lancaster has been brought in to solve the town's budget deficit, Lucy isn't all that excited about his vision. They couldn't be more opposite, except for one small thing. Unbeknownst to both of them, they've been swapping anonymous notes in their little free library. Could they fall in love with each other's words while fighting in real life? Don't miss this delightful read. Perfect for all your summer reading fun. Pick up The Library of Second Chances by Savannah Carlisle wherever you purchase your books or use the affiliate link below. Find out more about Savannah at harpethroad.com. That's harpethroad.com. What do you have at six? Uh, I have, uh, this is a recent movie that came out on Netflix, uh, Love Divided. Oh, It's from Spain. It. Oh. <laughs> Essentially. Gosh, these people. Uh, and this, this is another bizarre one. So we start with this pianist um, who is moving into a new apartment. She's broken up with her boyfriend and... Her sister helps her get a job as a waitress, but she's very focused on practicing the piano to make an audition uh, uh, to go to school or whatever, to, to be a pianist for something. And uh, she, the building next door has a guy who hasn't left his house for three years. He's like a hermit and he creates games, uh, board games and stuff for kids. But the walls are so thin that they can hear everything that goes on. And he tries to torture her to move out because he's like, I need total quiet to work. And his friend's like, you need to get out of the house. And essentially they battle each other to see who will move first and who will be victorious. And eventually they start talking to each other through the through the wall and having dates. And they don't know each other's names. They just call them neighbors. And then it's like, they're falling in love through the wall, Rachel. So it's like, shenanigans like that and then she has a a weird ex-boyfriend and of course she doesn't really want to play the piano she wants to sing and he encourages her and he finally leaves the house you know it's very typical in this stuff but it is very funny that this relationship starts through a war like through a warring wall you know like Mm -hmm. they don't live in the same apartment building they live in buildings right next to each other and it's really funny and i was like this is ridiculous. This premise. This wouldn't ever work. They, they literally bring their best friends over to have a date, a double date through the wall. And I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and there's some funny moments in it. And there's some What's serious moments. Love Divided. Oh. It's actually brand new. It came out this month on Netflix. Oh. I recently watched it. And I said, I got to put it on the list because I do oh. think that there's a charm to it. Cool. And I didn't have to put the subtitles for this one, guys. <laughs> I understood yes. every word of it. <laughs> Oh, but it yet? is from Spain. Yeah, it's a Spanish oh, Okay, movie. yeah, yeah. From Spain, yeah. Mm. Well, my number six is also pretty new. It just came out in February. It's uh, Molly and Max in, in the future. And this is a indie sci-fi take on uh, When Harry Met Sally. 
Yeah. Um, and it, even if you don't watch the movie, watch the TikToks that they do, because it's so amazing how they made this, how like the, we had the director, Michael Litwick on the podcast. And, uh, and cause I saw this at South by Southwest last year, 2023, and I loved it. And uh, it, it just has such a unique visual aesthetic. It's so different. Uh, and uh, and he, you know, most of it's done in front of like a green screen. And a lot of times that kind of has a bad rap, like a green screen, but what they did is they used it to create this really unique aesthetic and really unique thing. And they use animation and miniatures and so much creativity. And basically like him and his director of photography basically like spent the pandemic, like making everything for this movie. And, uh, and, uh, it's, so you see this couple, they meet at the very beginning, they have a meet cute. And then over the course of the next like 20 years or whatever, they keep meeting and meeting and meeting. And there's always in this you know futuristic world, futuristic setting. And uh, it's, it's very, very creative and fun. And I really enjoyed both the leads and like, there are a couple of the set pieces that maybe go on a little too long. It's not perfect, but I did really, really enjoy it. And it is just so cool to see what people can make like just with like nothing like they had like right. nothing in budget it was just like him and his friend you know and and they made it happen and i i just i love that and admire yeah. it so much and i uh, saw the so. yeah i saw the trailer for this movie but i couldn't find it playing anywhere so i don't know if it's available yet like yeah according now. to uh according to letterbox it's on hoopla now so that's exciting oh okay so people can watch but, it on yeah. because I did see the trailer and I was like, this is an interesting take, you know, mm -hmm. like to really tell somebody put, you know, yeah, it's like independent. It's not as fancy looking, but you can tell somebody mm -hmm. put some thought in making it unique. Yeah. And it was so interesting because it came out the same weekend as uh, Madam Webb, you know, which has all <laughs> the budget and all the everything. And it's yeah, terrible. And that's trash. No yeah. story. Awful. And it in both of them actually have Zoja Mamet. I don't know if you saw Madam Webb, but the, there's a character that is literally like just always in the uh the villain's apartment <laughs> she's just there at the computer it's like she's stuck there <laughs> and uh and you just they like, cut all the scenes that of her was her out. she did nothing and she, so <laughs> it's thankfully she has this because it's so much better but um but yeah um, i i really enjoyed it it was a burst of creativity and uh and a, a fun way to riff on you know classic story so yeah um, what do you have at five? I have Rosalyn, um, mm, just a period yeah. piece. It's loosely one. based on a book. It's sort of a different take on Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Like Rosalind's like, how dare you, Juliet, take my man? And she tries to <laughs> sabotage the whole thing. And yeah, because eventually... the beginning of Romeo and Juliet, yeah. Romeo is in love with Rosalind. Exactly. And yeah. then he falls for he her cousin, her. Juliet. Yeah. Which... yeah. <laughs> and then you never hear from Rosalind again. Right. Um, yeah, this but, was fun. Uh, I liked it. Another this was a really done. fun take, and oh, there's there's a lot of chemistry between Caitlin Deaver and Sean Beale. Yeah. Who's like, you're gonna the dad's like, hey, you're gonna marry this guy? She's like, no. And then they, when they have to help them fake their <laughs> death, it's ridiculous. You know, when she feels bad for like essentially being a monster, starting yeah. all this trouble, uh, and mm -hmm. oh, the way they play Romeo as just such a a ditz you know and like cool yeah on everything it's hysterical it's the way they spin on it yeah this is another and, one that was dumped on hulu like, right it was because yeah. it's a it was a fox movie and it was supposed mm -hmm. to come out theatrically but disney bought hulu and mm -hmm. disney dumped it on hulu and it was there for a while and i think it was like uh, for three days on disney plus but then hulu got rid of it yeah yeah. But guys, you can buy it. You can buy it. Digitally thankfully. now. It's available on Amazon. Yeah. I don't want to pay twenty dollars for it though. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was like $19.99, <laughs> Rachel. Because I was like, is this on sale? Because I, I I'll buy it because I love this movie so much. It'll eventually go down. They took it. Yeah. It, it'll and it was down. like $19.99. I was like, no, sir. <laughs> no man. I did, of course, I had to buy Timmy Failure because I love and adore it. Oh, that's available but, uh, too. At least yeah, at least now, we have that. Yeah. Yeah, because now you have to buy it. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it, it's it's good. It's better than people would think. Better than I expected sure. it to be. Yeah, totally. me too. I agree. Um, my number five is a little movie from last year. Um, my number five is a little movie from last year from Finland. Uh, it's called Fallen Leaves. And this movie won't be for everybody. It's not 
Like there's not a ton of story. Some people will think it's boring, uh, but it's really, really cute. It's about this, uh, this couple, they have this meet cute at the beginning. Things are, things go wrong in their lives. They lose jobs, they get jobs, they lose them again. They have, uh, you know, several meet cues. There's one point where she gives him her, her number and then he loses it. And so he doesn't know how to reach her and she's waiting for him to call all that. There's also a hilarious scene where they go on their first date and they go to see The Dead Don't Die, which is a movie I hated. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> to see them go on this date, she's just kind of looking at them like, what is this movie? And and uh, so that's really fun. And they have great chemistry. It's There's like a dry sarcasm to it. And like I said, it, it'll, it won't have enough story for some people, but I thought it was basically a perfect film. I loved it and uh, I loved the two of them. I loved their journey. Uh, and uh, so Fallen Leaves, you should check out. It's on the uh, it's on the Mubi app, I guess. M-U-B-I. Um, so people have that. They can watch. They can watch it. Uh, or yeah, I haven't seen this one. I thought this one was a straight up romance, though. I didn't know it was a rom-com. Oh yeah, definitely rom com. Yeah. Definitely rom com. Yeah, I mean it has I, some like I, tougher stuff, like them losing their well, jobs yeah. and you know things like that. But, yeah, but they always uh, throw yeah. that in in rom coms too. So yeah, yeah. So it it no definitely yeah rom com. It's very similar. I I think it's kind of like, uh, it, I think it's very similar to like Before Sunrise in like mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. style. Um, and I guess some people don't think those are rom coms. Um, but uh, just like you're just spending time sort of watching being with these people and having them talk and uh and getting to know them and they have great chemistry and uh but yeah i would say it's a rom-com we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life what about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party now is the time to check out the hallmarkies merch store full of festive designs by artists like jessica miller Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. What do you have at four? I have uh, a movie uh, it's on Netflix. It's called Make Me Believe. It's a Turkish film. Mm. It's so beautiful to look at. Like it's at the coast. And I'll... listen, these be- like Turkish people, they are beautiful and they never age. <laughs> and I was attracted to this movie because I was like, this dude was in a historical Turkish show that I watch. And Rachel, you know, I talk about that all the time my various historical Turkish shows that I watch. <laughs> and uh, what a beautiful, like, oh, these people are so beautiful to look at. Essentially, <laughs> essentially, uh, they knew, these two people have known each other for basically all their lives. And uh, they had a falling out when they were teenagers. She's a magazine editor. Uh, he's a photographer. And their grandma's fake getting hurt in order to make hook the children up. So the grandmas are doing all these shenanigans to, to to make these kids get together and they keep fighting. And then she finds out that, oh no, he's this uh, elusive photographer that I'm trying to get a cover story on. So she tries to make nice with everything to try to, you know, get an interview with him. And along the way, there's a bunch of shenanigans where like she throws him in the ocean and he loses the keys of the bike and they got to walk home. They get arrested and it's all their grandmother's faults, too, that they get arrested. So there's a lot of those, she hits them on the head, you know, those type of classic funny moments that, you know, are normal for a rom-com. And, of course, you know, the big reveal comes up and you're like, oh, well, it's a little predictable, but, like, it's enjoyable to watch. And I really love this movie. And they're just, it's just so beautiful. You feel like, oh, I'm there. I'm at that lighthouse. I'm surrounded by these beautiful creatures, you know. And it's oh Rachel, what's it he's called? He's gorgeous. It's make me believe. And where are you watching on? This is on Netflix. On Netflix, okay. Yeah. I definitely have to he's, check it out. He's gorgeous. Yeah, we really have to do a Turkish. Rachel, episode. I don't know how you, I like. 
listen, I don't know what your preference <laughs> is, but you're going to need a fan. Because some of those <laughs> yes. men okay, We definitely like, have to do a Turkish episode. Those, sure. Some of those men are like, wow. <laughs> and I like it. Yeah. When I walked out, I knew who this kid was because he was in Magnificent Magnificent Century Kusan. I need something to hold me over between Bridgerton yeah. seasons. So oh it's my good. gosh, yeah. <laughs> like so, I I already knew he was beautiful from the Turkish show that I watched uh, called Magnificent Century Kusam. So uh-huh. I knew he was beautiful already. Mm. But like, when I like after I watched this movie, I stepped outside. I went to the store. I saw all the guys around me, and I was like, it's just it's just not the same. <laughs> These people are astonishingly beautiful, you know? I'm so jealous. I would like wants to have a schlub, you know? What's the schlub? There's no schlub. No, it's, it's very funny. beautiful. Yeah. And it's it's got yeah. steamy moments, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but mm-hmm. it's not like raunchy or anything like that. This one is not raunchy or anything like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, But even yeah. the thrillers, Rachel, beautiful people. <laughs> horrible crimes but you're like i don't care because you're beautiful right. <laughs> that might well, be a little bit you know <laughs> but come on listen it's not a lie people love to watch beautiful people it's not mm-hmm. a lie so enjoy it <laughs> well my number four might be my favorite decom i've ever seen i absolutely loved a little movie called prom pack last year uh this is such a good teen rom-com uh, it's a throwback to your John Hughes era type of, I mean, it, they, the whole theme of the prom in question is 80s, 80s prom. So like it literally is a throwback in some ways, but, but it's such a good little romance. Uh, basically you have kind of enemies to lovers where you have, she's the, she's the smart girl who wants to go to Harvard. Uh, there's the jock who she initially dismisses as being an idiot, uh, whose dad is on the board at Harvard. So she agrees to tutor him uh, so that, uh, you know, she can get some in uh, at Harvard. And of course, you know, sparks fly. Um, and uh, and they're so good. Amazing chemistry. It's really charming. And then at the same time, her best friend, who she has the prom pact with, uh, played by Milo Mannheim, he is uh all he's in love with he has his own like they're platonic friends and it kind of goes back and forth a little bit between them but the main story is between her and the jock guy and him and he is in love with the basically like the homecoming queen uh who is also smart and great and they have nice chemistry too and i i just I just thought it was great. I absolutely just loved the fact that it was the main core French was about a platonic friendship. Um, I thought that both of the other relationships were great. I, I, I I just really enjoyed it. It was my favorite thing from Disney in last year, which, you know, is kind of crazy to say. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. I love it. Uh, I so actually, I, have I haven't seen this in the movie, but I was like, Rachel talked so much about this one. I said, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> and like, I know, I now have... I've like built it up too high. Yeah, no. It's just, but... it's just it, does, yeah. it does what it's trying to do so well. I mean, right. I could see you being like, it's super predictable because it's not like anything. Well, yeah. It does follow a formula, but Yes, it but does you have it... to also realize it's like a Disney like movie. Yeah, so, it does like, it yeah. so well. And I just loved the cast and and uh and so yeah it's and it it did get some flack for it does have some moments where they used like the crowds or obvious ai but i it didn't really bother me because you know it's it was made during the pandemic like you know it's gonna have it didn't really you're not gonna escape that nowadays it's a creature (laughs) of the time and i don't think they would do it now uh oh they totally do it now it's just better (laughs) <laughs> maybe but I, like you literally couldn't have crowd scenes basically no you know, true like, yeah you have to yeah. at, for a time or it was incredibly expensive incredibly difficult so they should have done um, it with mannequins like the soap operas did it but anyway yeah. um <laughs> but that was yeah. certainly a deal breaker for me uh no. because I, I liked the lead so much in the story and and it was just such a good example of doing doing what i was trying to do and doing it well yeah. um so uh what do you have at three uh rye lane Oh, okay. yeah, I just yeah. really enjoyed so this cute. one. We talked about it's it. It's so just cute. so cute. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, good choice. Um, my number three is red, white, and royal blue. Mm-hmm. I just absolutely well, love it. I thought it. it would be I, higher. 
for I've you. I've watched it, I think, 10 times on Letterboxd. Oh, wow. <laughs> it just was my comfort watch. I just love yeah. both the characters and I their chemistry was so good. And uh, and uh, I... You know I what I've noticed with this movie is that women seem to love this movie. Yeah. And I get so many opinions on like, I, I've read so many like pe- like women just gushing about how much they love this movie. And I was like, mm-hmm. how much did everybody else love this movie like did it did it appeal to yeah you know well, uh, gay mean, men like no in reality like young gay men yeah. did it appeal to them you know well, i don't I know mean, my friend joe who we did the recap with he loves it and okay. then my friend larry who is not that big into rom-coms he really liked it okay. uh so those are only those are uh well okay the, but those yeah, at are least two of my best so, yeah. gay friends because i've been trying to like i looked it up and i was like it's all these like women talking about yeah. this movie so i didn't know if it, it was just so sweet it and it is sweet they they uh, i'm it, not surprised they did that enemies either. to lovers so yeah. well i was so invested totally and, but i'm not surprised oh, I, that women love that movie because those are the type of elements that we love in a mm-hmm. rom-com and yeah. they successfully right. did it yeah yeah uh so what do you have it to I have Emma, the 2020 yeah, version too. of Emma. I got yeah. it too. Yeah. So very charming. I wasn't expecting much actually from this interpretation. And I like it more every time I watch yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, it, it, my esteem grows for it more fondly. Like yeah. some, some things are too on the nose. Like I get it. They're so wealthy and the poor, you know, like the lesser, you know, you get that's mm-hmm. very stuff i wasn't that blown away by the costumes but i do love all the pastel color i just find it very well you know what's interesting yeah. is um you know that lady on youtube who does the um yes does yeah. the thing you what know the, the historical rankings yeah, or whatever i do she said that it was like incredibly historically yeah. accurate it is actually it totally is but you know yeah. I, it's funny because i wasn't that crazy about the costume but it is the closest we're ever going to get to that yeah um same thing with persuasion apparently but i refuse to believe that because i don't <laughs> like that movie uh, oh, i also the, didn't like the costume persuasion that movie was not historically accurate it was a mess the 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 you know, 2022 didn't she one? say didn't she say the costumes were historically accurate for that one no because they no, have like a, i'm confusing well, this one then they, i must be confusing they, because they have like such Pardon. a mixture of uh, no you are correct i am confusing i am confusing movies here maybe there's like a individual look or something like that yeah but, no, um, those are but, terrible costumes as well yeah but. terrible i love johnny flint so much in this oh, yeah. oh he's so swoon worthy when he's like riling on the ground <laughs> oh well, guys uh, you know, if for anybody who loves, uh, he's so jealous. Re- yeah, I know. Oh. If, if for anybody who loves, you know, uh, some some rear end shots, the posterior <laughs> shots. There's a few that took me out. I was like, do we really need this? No, you know? I don't think but, we needed that. I mean, she was trying because what the, she was trying to do was really <laughs> shoot the movie from the perspective of the servants. Which right, was exactly. Yes, choice. Because again. You have to try something Which different. Does not you always know? like work, Emma's though. been made so many times. Yeah, like you have to try something different. And so I, I, I don't, appreciated why it's she funny because I don't think that works though as the perspective of the servants. In mm-hmm. some scenes it does, and then it completely abandons that in other mm-hmm. scenes. So it's not consistent. Yeah, but I, I, I do Nighy like as the dad. Oh He's my so gosh, good She's so ch- as her dad, he has like when he puts the screen in front of him, like at the yeah, end. he's completely useless in any kind of like totally. comfort. Well, I mean, daughter. he always is. In, you uh, know, in, but but it, I thought the way they did it was very good, and his performance was really good. Totally, and he was and, loving. He didn't come yeah. off as a buffoon. He came off as like a, a very caring dad, despite you know. And this was the there. maybe this why I have it so high. Also, I mean, obviously, I'm a huge Jane Austen person, but this was the last movie that I saw before the closures. Um, I, I think it was for it, me too. I'd seen yeah. it twice, and uh, I, and then I went with my mom, and we saw it for her birthday. That her oh, my mom would have loved this. Yeah, March tenth, and uh, and so yeah, it was like literally the week of you know the closures and everything, and I was just so yeah. sad. This was uh, the last and, movie I saw too, and uh, I think that Mia Goth is absolutely great as uh, Harriet. Uh, oh she's God. so good Boy, girl in this. in this movie i love the, the cast way, is great yeah. yeah the cast is the whole cast is great i love the way it uses music yeah. i think it's really wonderful I the oral arrangements and i know i love yeah. just the pastel look of this movie mm-hmm. it didn't it annoy me beautiful. you know normally that would have annoyed me but i just yeah. think it has such a such a, a good look and it does stand out from other mm-hmm. emma adaptations yeah uh, it's the same story 
but it stands out and it's mm -hmm. a fresher take. I love And I'm it. so bummed that the Sarah Snook persuasion is like gone. They're not doing it now. Cause I was so hoping, I was hoping for like another Mm. Yeah. sort of like fresh take, like on Emma for that one, but no, Yeah. sadly, we're stuck with the Netflix version. Well, especially Um, after we got this horrible version, it would have been nice to have seen something, yeah. something better. But, uh, but, wow. Uh, hey, what do you have at one? I have the lost city because Okay. I love romancing Yeah. the stone. And this is like a, a newish take. It's And a fun Daniel movie. Radcliffe is hysterical in this. Mm Now, hmm you know, this is a good movie because I showed it to my brother and he's like, yeah, watch this movie. And then I've caught him several times watching it on uh, by himself, Yeah. you know, and I think the divide join Randolph is just so funny in this movie. what she's like listen i am trying with my client like and my friend like she goes out of her way Oh yeah, she is really funny. I forgot about that. Yeah, she's yeah really good. she goes Yeah. out of her way getting on weird planes of chicken and stuff to help her friend and her only Yeah. client that she's throwing all her money in and Yeah, that is true. She is really funny. I forgot. it's really funny and i just the, the i think i love that moment where the, the <laughs> secret pants and they booby trap and the and, uh, and the uh The motorcycle flies off the cliff and they're like, oh no, did we kill them? And, they're, and he's like, no, no, they're just really, really hurt. And she's like, no, I think we killed them. And it's just so funny. I mean, Brad Pitt, the Brad Pitt of it all. Um, the why are you so handsome? My father was a weatherman. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot and of it's fun. just, it's ridiculous. It's a lot of fun. And it Yeah. is, it's, it's a fair point. It is a updated version of Romancing the Stone. It truly is. But it is, it can't stand on its own feet. But if you like Romancing the Stone, you're going to like The Lost Yeah. City. The only reason I didn't have that in my top 12 was just because I don't think the chemistry is quite there, but, Right. but uh, it's really I fun. forgave I really all that enjoyed though. it. Yeah, I really I forgave. enjoyed it. I agree with you on the chemistry, but I forgave it so much because it's, I've been wanting to have a sort of romance adventure movie Or, you know, rom-com Uh movie huh. like Romancing the Stone. And it's like, that is like Yeah. a lost thing. Nobody does Right. that anymore. And like the Lost City went back and did it. And it was successful. And and I hope if they ever make a sequel to it, that it's not the Jewel in the Nile, the sequel to Romancing Right. the Stone, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. But I've never seen it. I've never seen that sequel. wait until they break them up. Oh, And then I he's hate got that. to go save her. Like, I, I, it's not a bad because they still have great chemistry, but it's not... It's not romancing the stone. It just Mm, right. it doesn't quite live up to that. But yeah, but if you ever get it, to, you know. But I I lived and breathed those both those movies because you know I loved Mm romancing -hmm. the stone so much. But yeah, this Well, was fun. my number one is a movie I think everybody's forgotten but me. Um, it's from 2021. It is Single All the Way is my number I have one. not seen this movie still. I absolutely love this movie. Uh, it is such... a wonderful little romance uh it's, it's a friends to lovers story uh that uh he they've been friends uh he ends up going with uh their roommates too and they uh he like sees him go through all these like horrible relationships and Luke, Luke McFarlane is in it uh he plays kind of a pretty boy in it uh but sweet and uh and <clears throat> anyway they go home And they end up, uh, they end up uh, kind of having, there's like a fake relationship at a certain point. And uh, they end up getting together, so again, friends to lovers. And the thing I guess I love the most about this movie is that it was so refreshing to me to have a movie that was just about love. And everybody, there was... Like, I think they should be able to tell all stories uh, about the L LGBTQ experience. I think they should be able to tell. But so many of them are rooted in trauma, which Exactly. totally valid. It's just not, Totally. yeah. But uh, in this one, they when they announce, you know, that they're engaged or whatever, everybody cheers. Everybody is, this this family is so loving. And they're like, what are you doing? Why are you here? Go and get him. Like, go and, like, there's never a moment of, they just want what's best. And Jennifer Coolidge is so lovely in it. Barry Boswick Yeah. is in it. They're both great. Um, I just loved this family so much. I It's funny. It's sweet. They have, you know, good chemistry. I love a friend's to lover story. 
I just absolutely love this movie. And especially because I think the year before we'd gotten the happiest season, which right. was again, rooted in trauma. And you felt so bad for the Kristen Stewart character, uh, what she had was put through. And so to have a, a story that was just so loving and maybe some people will say, oh, this isn't realistic or whatever, but like, doesn't matter. Most of the people that I know are like pretty loving and kind and excited. Like even like my family is pretty traditional, uh, from traditional background, traditional Christian background. And if my sister got engaged, we would be so excited. We would be right. so happy. My sister's gay. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I just feel like, uh, that, that it was just, it made me so happy watching this movie and it still does to this day. Uh, I just love this family so much and I love this couple so much and uh, it's really good in my opinion. I'm so. kind of embarrassed. I'm so behind on my Netflix Christmas movies mm-hmm. and this is one that I've been meaning to get to and I just always run out of time or, you know, I've got to watch mm-hmm. those two and a half hour historical episode Tur- of my Turkish soaps. <laughs> so I never have time, Rachel. <laughs> But I'm, yeah. I'm going to definitely see this one because I, I've heard good things about it. Yeah, it was. It, but it is so surprising good. to me that bet- and the- between us that we have three LGBTQ rom- rom-coms that are dealing with men. But we haven't quite found the right mixture yeah. for a female-centric. You're right. You're right. Because yeah, like you like you said, you had that one rooted in trauma. And like we, we don't have any fun with just two women falling in love. It's always yeah. so serious. Or right. it's it's pervy. Yeah, it's either very right. serious where they break apart, whether it's like, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of period pieces about that. And, on you know, they can't be mm-hmm. together because of the time or whatever. So, you know, you're you're going for a ride like that. But modern day, we don't. And if we do, it's I kind of like it. a pervy look, which is not great either. Like, or it's like a secondary, like in anyone but you. Exactly. Oh, Her yes, sister. exactly. It's a secondary. It's not the main focus of anything. And mm-hmm. I feel like we need to like you know try that on like come on yeah, let's get some let's ladies let's be the center of that and maybe there is and i just don't know it exists um because it's gotten lost in the shuffle or something but i would like to see that as well i would too if people know of any uh then let us know yeah. but uh but yeah i uh yeah i agree that's a very good point that's very true uh so uh yeah that's our list and remember you can hear our 13 and 14 if you are members of the patreon as a bonus you should check that out um, I did ask the Patreon, uh, the patrons, what their favorites were, and Alicia Lomas Gross says Rye Lane, which made me very happy. Uh, yeah. Anne Weathery Scott says this makes the 2020 uh, rom com seem pretty not memorable so far. She has Love Hard, had a great time watching it with my family, uh, and she hasn't seen anyone but you yet. Uh, yeah, Love Hard. That I just I didn't like the premise, but. Oh, yeah, that's a Netflix Christmas enough. one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I just him her getting catfished. It just was too weird oh. for me. But I another one it. I haven't seen. I really got to catch up on these Netflix uh oh, holiday. So yeah. far behind. Um, and then Becky Shopner, she has Love Hard and Red White and Royal Blue yeah. as her picks. So yeah, if you want to be a part of these episodes, then definitely check out the Patreon. And also uh you can get that bonus episode. So this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed what? doing this. And we are going to do like a, uh, to cap off this whole series, we're going to do an all-timer list, our favorite rom-coms, uh, period. Um, and that's going to be very difficult, but uh, we're going to do it. I'm not it. looking forward to it. <laughs> and and the thing is, <laughs> so what I thought would be fun is basically you can only pick from the movies that you put on yeah. your various lists. Oh boy. Th- that's so, so difficult. So, <laughs> so difficult we, we did a, we did a classics list. We did 60s, 70s. We did 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. And now this. So, uh, so we'll do uh, a all timers uh, list and it'll be really fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. And then we have a bunch of other ideas. If you have rankings that you want us to do, uh, please put in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, <laughs> Terry, where can people find you? At Twitter, I'm at Flurry Heaven. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And I have full reviews on my website uh, of every single one of these movies we talked about. So, because, uh, you know, this was all when I was a working critic, you know. Uh, so uh, definitely check all of that out. And, uh, and, 
then also make sure you're following us at Hallmarks Pod, Hallmarks Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really, really appreciate that. If you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And we have like individual episodes of a lot of these, like Red, White, and Royal Blue, Prom mm-hmm. Pact. We did a full episode on that. We did a full episode on Father of the Bride. We did a full episode on Molly and Max. I'm at least with the director. I interviewed Jonah Feingold from Xmas. I So anyway, we did a whole episode on Bros. Uh, we got a lot going on uh, on the podcast with a lot of these. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so definitely make sure you check that out. And uh, and like I said, check out the Patreon and then the merch store. We really appreciate that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.